Good morning and welcome back to my channel and morning devotions. My name is Maggie. If this is your first time stopping by, I hope you decide to like and subscribe and click the notification bell. Come back, check out some of the other content I have on my channel. It is Sunday, September the 1st, and I want to give a great big happy birthday shout out to my daughter, Sarah. Today's her birthday and my son-in-law, Brian. Happy birthday. I hope you both have a wonderful day. Our devotions are coming from the Bible Promise Book Devotional for Women, and we are in week 35. We're finishing up week 35. It is now August, just like that. August is gone. September has begun. Week 35, we're finishing up <clears throat> the focus of kindness. Our devotion today is entitled Change the Game. And our scripture comes from the book of Luke, chapter 6, verse 35, out of the New American Standard Bible. And it reads, Love your enemies and do good, and lend, expecting nothing in return, and your reward will be great. And you will be the sons of the Most High, for he himself is kind to ungrateful and evil men. Okay. Let's get into this. True kindness often comes with a cost. There's nothing simple or easy about loving your enemy or being decent to someone who has treated you badly. It's contrary because your flesh wants revenge. Your flesh wants to give back. Your flesh wants to withhold. They don't deserve it. Okay, let's, let's just call it what it is. Let's admit what we know goes on inside us, the turmoil when someone has done us dirty. Okay, <clears throat> but that's what Jesus has called you and me to do. Talk about a tough task. I can't do it without Jesus. Okay, I just I'm honest with him. I'm like, I can't do this without you. Even if you aren't vengeful by nature, you wouldn't naturally want to have anything to do with someone who had stolen from you or lied about you. Right. Just imagine how much harder it is for people who are vengeful by nature. But there is, and I mean, to some extent, I want to qualify this by saying there's nothing wrong with putting up a boundary and not subjecting yourself to someone who has done you dirty. I think trust needs to be gained back and that there's nothing wrong with setting a boundary while you are praying through the circumstance and your attitude and making sure everything that you feel towards that person is in alignment with God's word. And that's crying out for help. Sometimes you can't avoid that because the person who did you dirty is in your family and you can't stay away. Okay. All right. So this is a tough journey, but it can be done because Christ said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's what it says in the word. So we can do this. It's rough. It's tough. It seems unfair. Lots of emotions and turmoil and hard feelings, but God doesn't want us to act in our flesh. All right. But remember, even if you're the world's biggest sweetheart, you still need God's forgiveness. When Jesus said that God is kind to ungrateful, wicked people, he wasn't just talking about thieves and murderers. He meant everyone. Everyone needs forgiveness. Everyone needs salvation. All have sinned and fall short of God's glory. It's Romans. Some of the greatest impacts you could ever have for God's glory could be in the way you treat those who have wronged you. That's how you show the difference Jesus has made in your life. If you are going around clapping back and fighting somebody or coming out in your flesh to satisfy your flesh's desire for revenge, for the smackdown or whatever it is you think they deserve. Come on, let's be honest. That's the only way you get breakthrough. Be honest. There, it's, there is something satisfying with seeing someone get their comeuppance. I'm sorry. <laughs> there is. But I want to have the right attitude because when my attitude is gleefully taking delight in someone else's downfall because they've been wicked, evil, and mean to me and mine, uh... God warns about the danger that could come on me for having the wrong attitude. Lord, you help me to be humble before you. I don't want anything to interfere 
with my relationship with the Lord or blocking God's blessing in my life just because some evil, wicked person finally got theirs and I had a cocky, funny attitude about it. I thought it was, I took delight in seeing them get theirs. And I, I still continue to this day because the day is coming when the wicked will receive justice. The wicked who have been doing the evil things that's been happening in our country, God is going to bring his justice. He has spoken it. And I says, Lord, you help me. The wicked are going to be removed. The righteous are going to be raised up. I don't want to have the wrong attitude when that happens. I don't. I want to give God the glory for fulfilling every word he said he would do because he is a great and awesome God who always fulfills his covenants and keeps his promises. Okay, stand on that. Bank on it because God is going to do it. But we have to have the right attitude. We really do. And that's why I say to the Lord, search my heart. Find anything in there that's not of you. Anything the enemy would use to trip me up and lead me into sin. Make me aware of it, purge it from me, create in me a clean heart. These are all things that we can say because our desire isn't to satisfy ourselves. Our desire should be for God's will to be done in our life. Okay? Remember, his plans are good. Jeremiah 29, 11, read it. His plans for you are good. They are to uh, prosper you, to not harm you, and to give you hope in a future. Every translation you read will have something to that effect. His, good, his plans for you are good. So it's like, Lord, I want to come into alignment with those plans, not my own. Okay. Everyone has a way that seems right to him, but the end leads to death. Sorry, I don't want a plan that leads to death. I want God's plan that leads to life. All right. Okay. When you love someone unlovable or give to someone who is insolvent, you're showing the kind of mercy God showed at the cross. And that's a game changer. Insolvent, you're giving to someone who can't pay it back. All right. And that's what it said up there. Lend expecting nothing in return. So be on your face and make sure you're giving as you're led by the Lord so that you can be his representative to that person. Okay. You want to show the kind of mercy God showed at the cross. And that truly is a game changer. That's how you show that you've been transformed by the Holy Spirit, okay? That's how people see how we've been transformed is by the way we treat somebody who's wronged us, the way we act with kindness towards people who are ungrateful. See what I mean? Not to be a sucker and get pulled in and always constantly, because con there are some people who are interfering, and let me just say this, and that's why you need the Lord's discernment, okay? Because I've had friends who had family members who were irresponsible, and they depended on the family to constantly rescue them from their financial faux pas. They didn't behave responsibly, they didn't manage their money well, and it resulted in other people being bled dry of their own resources, so they're living a life God did not intend them to have. They're basically sucking dry all the blessing from their family member because of their manipulation and, oh, calling on that family tie of, oh, we're family. You should be taking care of me. Well, how about you take care of me too? It goes both ways. So there are times when God will say, you need to step in and help them. <clears throat> and then there's other times where there's habitual things and patterns are not breaking where the Lord needs to deal with that person about how they're doing that. That's a completely different story than this. Okay. So just make sure that you're hearing from the Lord because you don't want to interfere with something God needs to do in somebody because the devil is in there stealing and robbing from them and that needs to stop. Okay. <laughs> you're not going to let him his thievery enter into you and you're getting bled dry. When you're giving as the Lord leads, God is going to have blessing wrapped up in that. You're not going to miss what you gave to them because God's going to replenish it because you're doing as he led you to do. Okay. I hope that makes sense to you guys. <laughs> Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for this word and this reminder. And it's so hard when we're in a place of hurt and woundedness based on 
the things that people have done to betray, to use us, to throw us aside, evil people who are ungrateful. It's hard for us to love our enemies and be kind to them when they've caused so much hurt and pain to us. Search our hearts and remove those things, Father, that keep us from behaving the way you would have us to behave. Help us to not be foolish or to be taken advantage of, but to be wise and obedient to your Holy Spirit and give as you lead because we want to be the hands and feet of Jesus to these people, that our actions would speak strongly of the transformation you have done within us. We want to be your witnesses and your representatives. Forgive us, Lord, those times when we sought revenge or took gleeful delight in someone else's demise or their downfall. We don't want that. We want your will to be done in our lives. Give us eyes that see and ears that hear and hearts that are tender to your calling and willing to obey in Jesus' name. Well, God bless you and thank you so much for stopping by my channel. I hope you decide to like and subscribe and click the notification bell. Come back, check out some of the other content I have on my channel. I hope you guys have a wonderful day in the Lord. God bless you and bye until next time.